Yo, what is going on, everybody? Yo, what's up, everyone? <laughs> so <clears throat> Nick and I are super excited for uh, this Friday. We have had a lot going on. Um, the last week, we had a mastermind with Pace and Cody. So you guys saw us in the offices over there while Cody and uh, Pace were presenting. So that's pretty cool. Um, first of all, what I'd like to say is like, who, where is everybody from that's on here right now? I just want to know what neck of the woods we got everybody showing up from. We're going to shout out people. As you can see, Nick is a big fan of LA. So if we got any people from Los Angeles in the house, give us a holler. We want to see you. If we got anybody from the Midwest where your girl's from, I want to meet, know that. So drop down what city you're from or what state you're from so we can talk to you and maybe talk about your market. Welcome to Free Leads Friday. My name is Caroline. To my, there you go. We work for Pace and Cody. We work on the JV and Dispo department. So <clears throat> Nick has actually been instrumental to me learning a lot about real estate. I did not get started until June of 2020. Nick, when did you get started in real estate? What year was it? It was August of 2018. 2018. Awesome. So Nick has been around the block a time or two. I'm still learning some things from Nick. So guys, we are with a master here. We're so lucky that Nick wanted to join in on this Zoom. That is our Zoom on this live that is called Carolina Nick's Live. So actually uh, really happy to have Nick on here. But um, what we want to see is you guys ask questions in here. At the end of this live, we are going to pull a records. We're going to pull a thousand records from Batch Leads. And we will give that to you guys for free. So we do a bunch of giveaways. I know earlier we had Matt Beard and Bryce Herrera on uh, the Batch Driven YouTube channel talking about that. They're doing a cha challenge. So really last weekend we had, uh, I think it was Jason was on here. He was talking about, he wants to know how to time block his day better. So every week we can cover a different topic. We'll answer any of the questions you guys have. But uh, Nick and I were kind of chatting before the Zoom, before we, or the Zoom, I'm going to say that forever because I Zoom so much, before the live, that uh, he was being really, uh, he's, what Nick, I'll let you talk about yourself, but he's being really conservative with his time. Something that Nick and I have found we used to just say yes to everything and that took away from our money making activity. So Nick, what were you doing this morning? Tell everybody what you did. So this morning, um, I just really spent like an hour two hours and just thought clearly. So I noticed that I do my best thinking when I wake up in the morning, right? I'm, I'm fresh. I'm able to think clearly without distraction and noise and anything like that. So I just really sit and reflect about what I want to accomplish. Um, I think about like the business standpoint of how I want my department to be ran and uh, just see clarity in the mornings. Awesome, yeah. And then the only other thing I wanna point out guys, if you have not yet, go over and share this on your Facebook channel, share this on with your friends. We wanna be able to help everybody. The biggest thing Pace and Cody have given us so much value. We wanna go give just like Pace and Cody do. So share this, tell some people to join us. And if you are on Facebook, make sure you hit that StreamYard link so we can see your name and give you a shout out. Let's go over some of the property or some of the areas we have people in here. We got Bill on here from Colorado. I think Bill was out here at the mastermind. So I'm pretty sure. And we then we got Zelko Jeff. here. You we say got Zelko. Oh yeah, we got Zelko. Zelko, we met him at the mastermind. There we go. We got a bunch of sub two people in here. What's up, William? Here we go. This is great. Hey, so this is perfect. Let's pull, pull this up right here. Maxwell Pinaming. Said was going to post in the group, but do you know how Noah Hoffman gets around the no under 31 days rule for Vegas Airbnb, or does he just make it a 31 day plus? That is a great question, Maxwell. I am not familiar with Airbnbs. Nick, are you? No, not really. Maybe. Uh, I mean, if a lot of people are interested in Airbnbs, maybe we can have Noah jump on one of these lives. Um, I know they've been doing it with Sunday service, but yeah, we don't really focus on the Airbnb side, you know, in terms yeah. of our department. Yeah. So Nick and I mainly focus on helping with JVs and dispoing deals. So my uh, priority is having those relationships with our buyers, understanding the market. So I can tell Nick when he gets somebody that's coming in that wants to JV with us, I can say, hey, you know, this side, if we split Phoenix into two, this portion of Phoenix is better to invest in than this portion. Or I can tell him specific things about neighborhoods. So that's a little bit of what we do. But uh, Max and everybody, if you guys would like us to like pull Noah up here, let us know in the comments here. Also, was it last Sunday service with Cody? I think Noah Hoffman was uh, live with him answering those questions. So um, definitely shoot, shoot a message to Noah. He's great on that. So good stuff. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, let's just get straight into this. So what do I look at this, the king and queen of this show? Thank you, Miguel. What's up, dog? 
Um, what we want to see is really we want your questions because whoever asked the best questions, we will pull you up live. So I'm going to drop a link here in a moment so you guys can come up here and actually chat with us and ask us questions. But then we will pull the records for you off of Batch Lead. So that's really what I'd like to go over. So here we go. We have a great question right here. So Aberrant Art said, what is the best use of a novation agreement? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite you guys up onto the stage with us. I have just dropped the link in the chat for you guys to join us. If you click on that link, um, you can come on to StreamYard with us and talk about, uh, ask us questions and interact with us. So what's up, Jason? But uh, best use of a novation agreement. Nick, I'm going to let you take that away. Yeah, so for us, the best use of a novation agreement is when we're probably about fifteen to $20,000 away from the price we need it at, um, whether that's wholesale or what have you. So the biggest benefit at least in the way that we structure innovations is when you're, um, you know, again, close to the number you need to be at, but the seller won't budge and you do an innovation agreement, which basically allows you to come in, fix and flip the property using your money. And then you sell it using your agent, uh, without having to actually close on it. So you save money on holding costs and you also save money on closing costs on the front end. So that's the biggest benefit of innovation. I know there's a ton of other things you can do with innovation, but that's how we use it. I muted myself there. Yeah, guys, novation agreement is just generally when we're only about closing costs off. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can you can work a novation agreement. Uh, when you're in the middle of that, you will you can be covering the mortgage on the property, the utilities, because you're going to have a crew in there fixing and flipping. Um, so just make sure that the numbers make sense. Double check that your comps are accurate, and uh, you have a crew that can get the stuff done within your budget. Um, because you're gonna be investing your own money into that uh, or your partner, your private money. So uh, novation agreements are awesome. We actually have, I think as a team, we've done a few, but I love talking novation with sellers. It's a really great way to uh, open up to getting the number that they want and making a deal for yourself because you don't have to pay those closing costs up front. So great question. All right, let's roll into another one here. So we got Jacob Prickett right here just said, how long does it take for the seller to receive funds upon closing? So does that happen the day that that day once closed? So actually we're dealing a uh, great question, Jacob, we're dealing with the closing right now. Um, it honestly depends on when they get all the closing documents and it's up to title and they, it depends if you're going to wire the, uh, the funds or get a check. Is that correct, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to have it wired, it typically takes longer, a paper check, they can typically do it once everything's closed out. And, um, you know, of course the buyer has to wire in funds first and that has to be processed. And then once that's clear, then you can, you know, they can elect to have either check or wire. Yeah. So, uh, it does definitely help to have open communication with your title company. A big thing I would recommend if you guys are on the creative financing with Pace Morby page, interact with people, ask questions on there and be like, Hey, what investor friendly title company do you like? Because we are shopping around for title companies. Sometimes title companies don't know how to do creative deals and they are just overwhelmed. Um, we have one that we're working with. We sent them uh, documents on a seller financing deal and the title company didn't even read the contract. He thought it was a subject to deal, so he couldn't even do our transaction. So our transaction coordinator, Rochelle Jarvis, really jumped in and helped me while I'm learning how to do everything with all these title companies. And it's like, hey, you know what? This is a seller finance deal. You should be able to handle this. So uh, you guys can also work with Rochelle. Um, I don't know what, what her charges are, but you should reach out to Rochelle at Constant Close. She is the best in the business. Like she actually came up to the mastermind and spoke quite a bit. So it was really cool learning what the transaction coordinators do. But um, working with title companies, you definitely want to find an investor friendly title company. And I would recommend asking people for recommendations. That's, that's the best way to go about it. So great question, Jacob. Um, let's go into the next one here. When purchasing, so Liz Eichner said, when purchasing sub two, do we purchase using our personal name or our business? Nick, I'm gonna let you break that down since I just chatted for a minute. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of benefits in purchasing under your business, right? We purchase under our business name and the way that our business is structured is it's owned all by a trust. So it's not necessarily like a holding company. So um, we just have multiple levels of basically protection. Um, you can definitely purchase under your own personal name, but for us, right, we have each business set up in a certain way so we can receive the tax benefits from it um, and kind of tie all of our businesses together. So really just depends. You can always do it with personal name, but 
we do it with the business name. Nick, why, what do you mean protection? Like, why would we need protection? Well, I mean, if something goes wrong, if for some reason the, let's say the lender calls a note due and just whatever thing, right? When you're dealing with real estate, you're dealing with people. And uh, like right now with the eviction moratorium, right? We've seen some tenants try to sue the landlords and just, it's crazy right now. So we want to make sure that we're protected, um, not only personal, but also as a company. So that's why we have our, our business set up and structured where there's multiple levels of protection. Um, and ultimately everything's owned by a trust. So that's the best way to have anonymity, um, just like he was saying. So say, uh, for example, you at some point in your time get 30 rental properties and you have one awful tenant and they want to sue you. If you have that anonymity, they can't look up all of the 30 properties that you own if you have different LLCs under that umbrella. So you'll be safer and uh, it just kind of protects you overall. Uh, again, we are not lawyers. Don't consult us on these things. This is just what we've heard. We're just sharing the knowledge that we know. But um, yeah, I would definitely recommend if you're getting started and you guys are doing wholesale from what I've heard from you know Pace and Max Maxwell on all the YouTube university stuff that I've done, you can do like your first few wholesale deals without an LLC. Um, but eventually you'd want to get an LLC just to, you know, get those tax benefits and those write-offs. So yeah, great question, Liz. And guys, don't forget, hit that link. If you guys want to come live with us, I'd love to uh, have somebody come up on stage and chat with you guys. And we can give you a little bit more detail into any, any of the questions that you have. So great. We got all the people on here. What's up, Joseph? Sweet. Okay. So here's another question about Novation. Thank you, Claudio. Uh, what does the paperwork look like for the novation agreement and title process? So Nick, have you done a novation agreement before? I, I have, but of course we have Rochelle, which is amazing and she handles all the paperwork and stuff. But from my understanding, it's just a general purchase agreement with an novation addendum. So it's the same type of thing when we do subject to deals. It's just a standard purchase agreement with a, an addendum that has additional disclosures. So I've actually seen the novation agreement. It's not super lengthy. Um, so from my understanding, that goes on top of just a normal purchase agreement. Great, yeah. And Nick, just for some new people, because I, guys, actually what I'd like to see here, if you guys have done a deal before, say done deal in the chat. And if you're looking for a deal, say looking for your first deal. So we can kind of know what our audience is at because I remember I, I'm actually, uh, I used to be in the army and I remember hearing all of the abbreviations. I was like, what the heck does this mean? When I was a civilian, I never knew what they were talking about when I was in the army. They'd say, this is an SOP, uh, AIT, MOS. There's a bunch of acronyms and I had no idea what they meant. So if you're, if you're new and you don't know what an addendum is, let's go into the details of what an addendum is because there are a lot of tricky words in real estate that people don't understand. So I see Claudio said that he's done some deals. I really would like to see everybody comment in here. If I can get a few more comments just to kind of know if we have newer people or if we have some more experience, I'd really like to make sure that we get extreme clarity when we're explaining things for you guys, because that's the whole point of this. We want to make sure you understand and we can help you guys. You know, keep in mind too, guys, that those who are constantly active in the chat, those are the ones who are going to get, you know, the data and we're going to help you guys. And we want people to be super active in this group that's the best way we can get value. Dude, Ramon is like one of my favorite guys. Ramon just put this sticker up here. Dude, you're awesome. If you guys are not reaching out to Ramon, you definitely should. He is a sub two student. He is actually a private lender for us. He is the bomb. He is in Atlanta right now. Um, he works what you work about 12 hours. He's on the daily dial with me every day. Um, so Ramon, if you guys need to partner up with anybody, Ramon is the guy to get with. So thank you, Ramon. Appreciate you. But look, done a couple deals. We got a few people looking for a deal to get started, looking for their first deal. So let's get into this. Nick, what is an addendum? Can you kind of explain that for everybody? Yeah. So an addendum is really just, there's a couple ways that we do addendums, right? So we do an addendum for disclosures. It's something that doesn't necessarily take away from your standard purchase agreement, uh, which I think we gave away last week or the week before. So if you guys haven't got it, go back and check it out, download our purchase agreement that we use. But it's just something that goes on top of your, your agreement. So it has additional disclosures, but it doesn't have to alter. So it's just a standard form for novation. It's a standard form for sub two that we just basically sandwich on top. Um, and you can also use an addendum, for example, to let's say you're, you have a property under contract and your seller needs to change the close of escrow. You can do an addendum to make that change. And it's, you know, it's all meshed in with your purchase agreement. You can do the same for, uh, negotiating the price. If you got the seller to agree on a lower price, 
you're already under purchase contract and you guys could just sandwich the addendum on top of it. Um, yeah, it's just in a, a form that's basically, you know, on top of the standard purchase agreement and it's referenced as well in the purchase agreement. So, yeah. So just a visualization guys, here's my notes, but look, this is like your original contract. Okay. I got Nick to sign it. Nick did this contract with me. We're good to go. But you know what? Um, for some reason, Nick has not given me access to the property during my inspection period. So what I'm going to do is reach out to Nick and be like, Hey, you know, I'm actually going to have to put down an addendum on top of this contract and be like, Hey, I actually, we are going to start the inspection period. When you give me access to the property, I need to be able to make sure um, <clears throat> that this is what you say it is. And you've cut out, you know, six days of my inspection period. This, this is, I'm either going to have to cancel the contract or we'll put this addendum in place so I can get into the property and really have a thorough inspection period where my contractors can check it all out. I can have a few bids and make sure this property makes sense for me. So think of an addendum and I probably spelled it wrong, but contract and then you just stick an addendum on top there. So I'm using, for example, you can extend your inspection period use addendums when you have to extend your closing period. You can use an addendum for just about anything on here. Awesome, great question. So uh, Dane, what's coming in live with us? So guys, make sure if you click that link, we'll pull you up in the middle of a question. We're gonna let you wait for a moment there. So I'll read this out for you. The paperwork like an addendum for a novation agreement or subject to, do you need those upfront before asking the seller to sign? Nick? Yes, so the answer is yes. Um, we basically, when we send out a DocuSign for the uh, seller to, to sign electronically, we always include that in there as well because we're we're letting them know up front what we want to do, right? So if it's an ovation, it's a little bit of a different pitch. Hey, you know, I, I definitely want to give you the money you're looking for. I don't want to sit here and negotiate price, but in order for me to give you that number, I need to fix and flip this property and sell it on the retail market first. And you get them to agree to that and say, awesome, I'm going to send you a purchase contract as well as an ovation agreement so you know exactly what you're, you're looking at. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely have them sign that up front. Awesome. And then I just want to shout out a, a, another vet. What's up, Benjamin? I see you, U.S. Marine Corps. I, I apologize. You weren't in the Army. I'm kidding. The Army was what it is. So thank you for your service, man. And uh, if we can help you with your first deal, dude, hit us up. We'd be more than happy to. You know what I haven't done yet, Nick, is I haven't thrown your phone number up there. Can you throw it up in the chat and we'll get it up there? Guys, <clears throat> we talked about this last weekend or last Friday, but this is Nick's personal cell phone number. He's going to put it in the chat. We'll throw it up on the screen so you guys can see it. Shoot him a text message. Like right now, once you get the phone number, shoot him a text message and be like, hey, Nick, you have such a nice beard. What products do you put in there? Ask coconut him. Oil. No, coconut oil. But guys, seriously, we are, we're here to do more than just like, if you need help with comping, we'll help you comp. We're here to do more than just dispo deals. So if you guys really need help, we really want to give back and help where we can. All right, great. Hey, look, we got somebody who wants to come live with us. This is a, a true homie. So I'm going to pull him up here. What's going on, Chad? Hey. How's it going, man? Uh oh. There we go. Chad, can you hear us? <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's up, dude? How, how's your day going after the daily dial? Oh, man, it's been amazing. Um, yeah. I can't hear you, Chad. Are you there? I think we lost Chad. He might have spotty service. Chad, if you can hear me, comment in the chat. We'll bring you back up in a little bit. <clears throat> Anyways, Chad is awesome. Chad is a sub two student. Um, he comes in on the daily dial. The other thing I can, just because I do the daily dial, big thing I can preach on guys, if you're new and uh, you're looking to get your first deal done, you should role play with people. You should practice role plays. It'll help you immensely. But uh, great. So let's find another question on here while we're looking for uh, somebody to come up live with us. Here we go. We got John Lunagas. If you have to terminate a contract, what's the best way to do that? And what, what doc do you use? This is a great question, John. Actually, we've had to do this before. So what I do is I actually reach out to our transaction coordinator, Rochelle. So again, you can get a hold of her at constantclose.com. Um, but I'll say, hey, Rochelle, you know, this deal does not work out for us. Hopefully you're doing this within your inspection period so you can get back your... Uh, earnest money deposit. And then you will reach out to title and say, Hey, we are going to cancel this contract. This just doesn't work for us. So we go a few ways. Rochelle is going to draft a document for our seller saying, Hey, this is an official um, document saying that we are going to cancel this contract on one, two, three main street. And what I do, because I not only have conversations with our buyers, I communicate with our sellers to set up walkthroughs and photos. I call the seller and I'm like, Hey, Nick, you know, we looked at the property 
it actually requires more work than uh, we had anticipated. Um, and, you know, I know that you don't want to budge from your, you know, $100,000 price, but we're really going to be around the $60,000 mark on purchasing this just because of the rehab. Um, and I know you, you're not comfortable moving, so we're going to have to cancel the contract. You know, I wish the best for you. So you'll actually see in your email here soon, a cancellation agreement from us. We've already signed it. We just need your autograph. And you send it, you've given them all the notifications and uh, you're good to go. Did I miss anything there, Nick? No, no, that's exactly it. <clears throat> yeah. So just to make sure all of your uh, I's are dotted and your T's are crossed, just go through contact title. Uh, I would send out a formal uh, DocuSign or write signature, whatever you'd like to do, and make sure that you sign and call that sell, call that seller and let them know that you are canceling that so you are completely covered. So that is a really great question, John. I didn't know that when I got started. Yeah, you know, what I think we should do, Caroline, is maybe we bring up some of these people that are looking for their first deal, and maybe we can give mm -hmm. them some advice on how we would go about getting their first deal. That would be a great idea. Would you guys like to do that? Can we see some yeses or nos in the chat here? Would you like to come up on stage with Nick and I and ask uh, ask us questions on how to get your first deal done? I would just like to see some yeses or nos right now in the chat. That'd be really great. So while we're waiting for those yeses or nos, I think, Nick, can you turn your volume down? I think I echo a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, great. All right, great. So what we're going to do is throw up the uh, another question. So how to use a subject to for a fix and flip? How is the structure differently from buy, uh, compared to buy and hold subject to? That is a great question. You were asking awesome questions today. So um, Nick, we've actually talked about this a little bit on our own. So when you have to do some like rehab to the property, that's gonna go into your entry fee on a creative deal. So subject to, when we say subject to, that is uh, uh, taking over a little, or <clears throat> how would you phrase this? Purchasing the property subject to the existing loan. So we're going to be taking over those mortgage payments. It's still going to stay in the seller's name. And then we'll go through there and fix and flip what we need to. So you're going to want to know those numbers before you get it under contract so you can have a rough idea. But um, generally it'll be like if you negotiated a down payment to the seller, um, if you have an assignment fee for yourself, if you're going to be moving it on and then adding in the rehab costs. But it's definitely a, a possibility. I guess, Nick, how would you structure this? Yeah, so what she's talking about, or um, Baron, sorry if I butchered that, um, we're talking about a subtail. So a subtail is where you, you buy as a subject to, and then you basically fix and flip it, similar to like a wholetail type of deal. Um, it's no different in terms of how it's structured. So we would just basically take over the mortgage, like Caroline said. Um, you know, if there's arrears or anything funky like that where you need to bring cash into the deal, then um, you would just basically get it under subject to, you know, agreement, close on it, and then fix and flip it, and then of course sell it on the market. So it's very similar to just a normal structure on a, you know, on a subject to. I have myself muted. Nick, okay. I'm a new person. I've never done a deal. What is an arrear? So an arrear is when a seller is in foreclosure or notice of default, basically any, any seller that has back payments that they're, they're basically delinquent on. So an arrear is when they have that, that money that they owe back. So for example, when we're analyzing a deal, we always look at arrears to see how much money it's going to take to bring that loan current. Cause if you're taking over anything subject to the loan needs to be current and, and good. So, um, so that's an arrear. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I know that this is exactly why I'm asking these questions, Nick, because it can get a little tricky when you're uh, hearing all these uh, real estate terms. So we have Miguel here. What's up, dude? How's it going? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Yo, good, yo. good. Hey, so, you're an Army veteran? I am. I was in for six years. What about you? I, I was for 10 years from uh, not, pretty much a year after 9-11 to 2012. Oh, nice. Yeah, I actually got in in 2012. So, hey, man, thanks for your service. Yeah, you as well. Listen, yeah, I was in that. 91 yeah. Bravo as a light wheeled mechanic. Okay, I had a couple of MOSs, but I ended up getting out as a 92 Alpha. Uh, oh, cool. Supply, yeah. Nice, so, uh, yeah, supply is a good way to be. So, Miguel, yeah. I just have, a, I have two questions for you. Where are you from? And have you done any deals yet? No, I'm, I'm in Tampa, Florida right now. Um, oh, dope. Yeah, I was, I'm was. i from Puerto Rico. I was living there all 2019, and I came out 
um, here and then Corona hit, so I just landed in Florida. But I'm here, I'm taking care of, uh, of an elderly, which is my grandmother. She's the last, my last one. Uh, so I have, I'm minimizing how much I'm on the road because I want to minimize my exposure because I'm always have to come back home to her. So I don't want to bring anything back home to her at risk. So I'm trying to master and really learn the virtual wholesaling as best as possible because of her. Um, you know, um, so I know that a lot of people lose focus because they try to do everything, learn everything in one shot. So what has caught my eye is three foreclosures. That's something that kind of caught my eye. It seems a little more challenging, but I've been one, I've been learning a lot about it. And um, you know, I I literally have like notes upon notes upon notes of stuff. Um, so yes, I'm working on just kind of niching into pre foreclosures. I don't know what you guys think about that, and then just mastering that one thing. Um, for That's for at least now, you know? That's awesome. And actually, that's a great way to be. And, you know, I actually moved out from Arizona from Clearwater. I used to live in Dunedin, Clearwater, so I'm from that neck of the woods. You definitely okay. need to go to Hawker's for lunch. That's the best place to eat in St. Pete. But, uh, uh, yeah, Hawker's is awesome. Anyways, <laughs> what you should do, you're absolutely right. Guys, this is the biggest thing you can do. There's shiny object syndrome is real. So a lot of people get into investing. They go down the YouTube University rabbit hole, and you're like, oh, my gosh, like, this guy's making millions from driving for dollars and holy cow, this guy's sending out mailers over here and this guy's door knocking and this guy's cold calling. Like I can just break it down every day and do something different. You, I think the best way to get started when you're new, and this is something I wish I would have drilled into my head is you need to take action. Say you're doing that. You're on, you're on a live with us right now and you're studying this. You need to be consistent in your action taking. So I think you're doing a really great job focusing on pre foreclosures. Excuse me. <clears throat> So be consistent in that. So I would do 90 days, just like if you're going to cold call, cold call for 90 days and follow up. So set up your daily routine and we can kind of go into that a little bit and then make mistakes. The biggest thing that you're going to learn from is when you make those mistakes. So if you get on a phone call with somebody and you flub it up and you're like, oh my gosh, it really sucks. You'll remember that one forever. Um, and you'll learn from that. And the other thing that I would say is have a community. That's huge. And these are actually things that Pace has taught us. So are you in the creative financing uh, with Pace Morby Facebook page, Miguel? I am, yes. Awesome, cool. So what I would do is like, I would reach out. If you're not in the mentorship, I'd reach out and be like, hey, does anybody want to do some accountability calls? Like, I'm new to this. I'm calling pre-foreclosure people. And actually, if you post in there, you can already see there's a bunch of sub two students in this live with us right now. I'm sure some of them would love to have another. They have a ton of data. You might find somebody who doesn't want to be on the phone. They're an integrator. They would love to squat up with you and they can share information with you and help you out. But uh, th I think you're on the right path. Focus on pre-foreclosures. The one thing I will say, everybody knows because of this moratorium, there's a lot. The pre-foreclosure list is getting hit by everybody. So have you called anybody yet on a pre-foreclosure list? No, I literally just started. I wanted to focus on one thing. So this week, well, two days ago, is when I decided to just only focus on pre-foreclosure. So I've been going hand studying pre-foreclosure. So I just blocked everything out. I'm just focusing on this. Perfect. Hey, so how much free time do you have like on a day-to-day -day basis? I work for myself. I have all day long is my free time. Love it. Love it. I, I would maybe go after pre-foreclosures, but as you're doing that, you want to drive for dollars. Because again, Caroline already touched on it. Free foreclosures is everybody's hitting it, right? They're getting mailers, they're getting cold calls, they're getting texts. So you need to find what the most niche list would be. And for us, it's always driving for dollars, right? It's houses that are physically distressed, houses that we can save and nobody's really after them. Uh, and they may have multiple pain points, but it's mainly just physical, right? So I would look at driving for dollars and maybe door knocking free foreclosures. And as you're doing all of that, you're cold calling that same list. And I, in my opinion, that's the best, the closest way to money is just doing that consistently. Okay, but one last thing. Um, as far as contracts are concerned, I know everybody has like their own version. Um, for pre foreclosures, if I wanted to get into the whole pre foreclosure wholesale, for, uh, wholesaling pre foreclosures, is it just the same standard contract for that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the same same type of contract. I can actually drop in the one that we use here. Yeah, so we'll share the contract with everybody, and that's, that's actually the one that we use. The links that are the contracts that we share. Hey, this is from Pace's lawyer, so these are good. The only difference is the lawyers that we use are in Phoenix or uh, in Arizona. So you, if you send this to a, a seller, they'll say, "Hey, this says Arizona." Just say the lawyers wrote this, and they're in Arizona, and they have to um, 
disclose that, but it's good in all 50 states. So PACE actually made this in mind for people to use in every state in the country. So you can use this anywhere in the United States. Okay, perfect. Where's uh, is a link in the chat? Uh, oh, there okay. you go. You put it right yeah. there. <laughs> Nick's so good at this. So, yeah, guys, that's the best. Stuff. I appreciate exactly. it, guys. Thank you very much. Of course, yeah. yeah. For sure. Great questions. And then the only other thing I'd say, Miguel, while you're driving for dollars, you can actually do it virtually. And guys, if you did not know this, every weekday at 4.30 p.m. Arizona time, Bryce Herrera, the master at uh, driving for dollars, goes live on the um, Batch Driven app YouTube channel. So you guys can see that and ask him questions. He does it every day for 30 minutes at 4.30 Arizona time. He'll cover how to um, look for properties and he'll actually probably reference Nick a lot. Nick has... Nick, tell us your secret about roofs when you're driving for dollars virtually. Yeah, so for me, I, I wanted to stay in areas that are non-HOA. Uh, so what I used to do is go on, on like Google Satellite and look at the different roofs, right? So you'll notice in an HOA community, all the roofs are like the same color, same style. But if you look on a map and it's like uh, different color roofs, right, you can typically go to those neighborhoods and find really good houses driving for dollars because those are neighborhoods that don't have HOA communities. Huge. And then I just put a new banner at the bottom, guys. New contracts at pacemorby.com. So you guys can see those there. So good stuff. Okay. Thank you for coming live with us, Miguel. Um, anybody else, if you'd like to join us, we'll take, we can probably take two more people on live if you guys want to get a little more personalized questions with us. The only other thing I wanted to say to Miguel is start like you're great studying pre foreclosure stuff. What I would do is look up maybe, we don't use scripts. Um, I think that can kind of trip you up, but you can look at a script and kind of personalize it. I would definitely recommend start calling people. The sooner you start calling and getting the hang of being on the phone and getting out of your comfort zone, you're going to, first of all, be helping people. And then you're going to start making money yourself. So guys, you grow outside of your comfort zone, get outside that comfort zone, call people, fail forward. And you're going to learn from that. And you're going to get the hang of it so much faster. That that's honestly the best part. I I'm actually a sub two student. I joined the master or the mentorship in September. And joining it and having a community to talk to and get through things has helped me. My learning curve has been cut in half. Pace goes way above and beyond. Working with Nick has been helping me a lot. But really being able to share ideas with other people has helped me immensely. So if uh, if this is helpful for you guys, please let us know. I'd love to see it in the chat or in the comments below on our video. Um, so great. Good stuff. All right. I just dropped that link in there. It says StreamYard. You guys can click on it and join us. Um, let's see. We have another question from John. If you're looking to get a VA to cold call for a month, how big a list would you start them with? And does that content slash type of list matter? Great question, John. Um, actually, I don't know if I, you guys have heard me talk about our VA that Nick and I share. Our VA is like in, amazing. We got our, we get all of our VAs from vahub.com. You should definitely check into that SES. They get trained. They have customer service managers that make sure that they're calling. They get to use the exact script that Pace and Cody's cold callers use when they are calling to see if somebody's motivated to sell. Um, I would 100% recommend using them. VA Hub is the way to go. But I think every week the VAs can knock out a list of 2,500 people. So they make around, I think they're, they average between 250 dials a day. Is that correct, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. On average, like 250 dials a day. Yeah. So that is, that is so helpful there on top of it. But um, I would say the best list to call is going to be your driving for dollars list, guys. So if you don't have the batch driven app, you should download that because first of all, it's going to be, nobody else is going to have that exact list. That is the best list you can do. So like we mentioned with pre-foreclosures, you can just get on batch leads and pull a pre-foreclosure list. I can do that. John can do that. Nick can do that. Pace can do that. Cody can do that. And we're all going to get the same list if we go through the one, two, three, four, five, six zip code. So if you choose, if you drive for dollars and you're selecting specific houses in a neighborhood, it's probably not going to be the same as what Nick pulls because he's just going to pull straight from batch leads. So I'd recommend, you know, I would actually drive for dollars early in the morning before anybody else would get up. Um, you can do it if you have like a child, you need to go to sleep in the back of your car. On your way to work, you can pull up the app. You can take photos of a property. You can say, this looks like a hot lead. I would actually use it because I would door knock for a little bit when I was working on my own. But um what would you say, Nick? Do you have anything else to add there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the fact that, you know, Batch has virtual driving for dollars, there's no excuse to not be able to do it. Um, you can be at home, in bed, right? Not worrying about anything, spending time with your kids, and you can be driving for dollars using their virtual feature, which I think, I think is huge. 
right? Um, again, you want to go off to the list that nobody else is hitting and drive for dollars is really the best list out there. So yeah. Uh -huh. That's the most unique list you can get. But guys, remember we are in business to do good business and you want to have quality conversations with motivated sellers. Who's going to be more motivated than a person with a hole in their roof? You know, if they have a hole in their roof and you see a tarp over it, you know, it probably gets, if you're, I'm, I'm thinking of Indiana when you're getting hit by a snowstorm, I'm from Indiana. It's probably not a lot of fun having a big hole in your roof. You probably have some motivation. You need to sell the house. You can't take care of it anymore. So find those distressed houses, those people have other bills to pay. They need to pay for their insurance. They need to pay for their gas, their gas in the car. They need to pay for food. Maybe you are, they're overwhelmed and they don't know what their options are. You can be the hero and help them and show them, Hey, I can give you, you know, we can work out a creative deal. I can take over your mortgage and I can give you some cash to get into a new property. Or maybe they own it free and clear or they own, they have a large amount of equity in the whole property and uh, a cash deal makes sense for them so they can move into an apartment and get their feet back underneath them. So there's a lot of ways to handle that. And if you guys want to, Nick, my hand, has anybody texted you yet? Um, yeah, I've gotten yeah. Two, two so far. You know Two text messages. Guys, you need to shoot Nick a text message right now because not only will we help you comp properties, but we can help you um, figure out a game plan and how you want to talk to a seller. So, Nick, let's pull your phone number back up here again. Let's shoot that up there so everybody can text you. Guys, just call Nick and tell him that he's the most handsome man on this live because you're not lying. Anyways, uh, but I just wanted to cover, like, we will help you guys. If you need to, we can, you know, we're planning on doing some extra specials we uh in the future to come on these other lives that we do but for us to do that we need to make sure that these youtube lives are beneficial to you guys so if you can you know give us a like subscribe subscribe to pace's page say hey these are great lives this is really helping me we plan on giving a ton back we have a lot of plans for the next month or so and uh we'd really like to pull more people on and teach you how to close deals um the way that we do and whatever we can to really help you so that'd be we need to make sure that this is beneficial to you guys all right, so Mark Anthony Rojas says, Rice says he tries to add 50 houses a day. Do you ever run out of neighborhoods to drive in? Not if you're virtually driving for dollars. What are you going to say, Nick? That's a great question. I mean, I think if you're in a market big enough, and even if your local market isn't big enough, that's more reason to go and drive virtually, right? You want a bigger market that has more houses. For us, I mean, our market's so big here in Phoenix that you'll never drive, you know, you'll never run out of neighborhoods to drive. If you're driving 50 houses a day, like he'll go and drive the same neighborhood for three or four days in a row. And then, you know, he'll go to a different neighborhood and a different neighborhood. And by the time you drive every single neighborhood in this county, it'd be time to drive that old neighborhood again. Just because things change, right? Maybe somebody passed away and the house is, is deferred maintenance. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can, even if we do, we can just virtually drive for dollars in a different market. So there's endless opportunity there. A hundred percent. Great question, Mark. The only other thing I want to throw up here is, guys, I please text Nick. You know, there was some random person on the street that told him he had a funny looking mustache. Text him. Tell him his beard is beautiful. Let him know that he's a good looking man and that you want to do deals with us or you need help. Really, I'm just kidding. Nobody ever insulted his mustache. But text him. We want to be able to help you guys. So shoot him a message. It'll go straight to him. Um, Chad, I see that you have a probate lead that you need some help with. If you can, I'll... Drop this share one more time. We'll give you another chance to come live with us and see if we can work through that probate um, scenario that you have. But while we're doing that, we will get into another question. So let's see here. Here's a good one right here from Jason Lombardi. Instead of canceling a contract, doesn't it expire if you pass the closing date? Nick? Yeah, I mean, you still have to cancel it, right? You want to make sure that you... Again, if you pass the closing date, then you find yourself in a bad position, right? So for us, we always have an inspection period. We know within the first 15 days, this is either going to be a deal that we're going to move forward on, or this is a deal that we're going to have to cancel. So for us, we know that you know within the first 15 days. But if for some reason, if you go past the 15 days, and let's say you have a buyer lined up and it cancels, I would always try to go for like an extension on the closing date if you can. But you just want to—it's just a courteous thing to do. Right. So Just what would you use for that extension? You'd lose, use an addendum. There we go, guys. Use that addendum on your contract. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I would just say it's the courteous thing to do. You just want to let your seller know, make sure the title company knows that you guys are canceling. And for us, I mean, I know we typically get that in, in writing as well. So 
Um, make sure you're doing that. Perfect. And then uh, let's pull up Chad one more time. We'll see if we can have a good signal here. Chad, can you hear us? Yes. There we go. We can hear you now. So what you got, man? Tell us about this probate lead. And then for everybody that's watching, if you did not know, a probate lead is when a person dies who is on the deed of the property. They die, and then the, the, if they don't have a trust set up, it can, or, yeah, if you don't have a trust set up, it can go into probate, so then the courts will decide. I keep property. hearing – um. It's like everything's saying over and over again. I can't I can't really hear you. Oh, are you on YouTube as well? Yeah. Close the YouTube window because now you're in StreamYard with us. Uh oh, we lost him. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Well, you know, we can probably do a little extra time with uh, Chad later on and help him with that probate lead. Um, okay, so here we go. We have another question from Aberrant art. What are the key things or red flags you look for to know if you should cancel a contract? Nick, I'm going to let you do that while I message Chad. Yeah, I mean, I would say if, if you're looking to wholesale it um, and you're not finding a buyer, like you've sent it out, you've worked with disposition companies like ourselves, and we've sent it out to our buyers list, and we're just not getting any traction, then that means really two things. One, it's an area that nobody wants to buy in, or two, the price isn't appropriate. So I would consult with your, your disposition company or your buyers and say, hey, you know, um, talk to some buyers and, and what is the most appropriate price to be at? But that would be one red flag. Another red flag is maybe there's a lien or something on the property. Um, that would be another red flag, flag to cancel as well. Mm -hmm. Great question. You're asking the best questions. Uh, these are uh, These are awesome. So we have Chad on here again. Let's try it for the third and final time, Chad. Can you, can you figure it out? <laughs> yeah, I think I got it this time. There we go. All right, man. Hey, hit us with your probate question. Okay. Um, like I said, this is my first one. So um, I got the lead. It came in through a. It came in through uh, the better, the better business bureau. Matter of fact, and um, I spoke with her this morning. She said her son passed away. Um, I think she said they're about ninety days into the probate. Um, that's, I mean, I, I don't even know what to do. Great. Okay. So good to know guys, probates can take up to a year. So first I would figure out, you know, um, do they have a lawyer involved right now, Chad? No, she said they don't got a lawyer. They're going through the court. Yeah. So, well, they're going through the courts. So there's a judge involved. Do they have any idea when the probate will be, uh, I don't even know what the right term to use is like resolved. Do they... Does the everything's moving really slow because of COVID, and I know courthouses are moving pretty slow. I was working on a probate lead in the Tampa area, um, and they were shooting for about a year for it to be resolved before we could take over a deed on the property. Um, do you know anything about that? No, she said they're about ninety days in. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you did say that ninety days in. Uh, Nick, have you done much probate stuff? Uh, no, I haven't had much involvement in, in probate. Uh, but I, what, what was the question exactly? Well, I guess, yeah. What do you need to know, Chad? You just have never done a probate deal and you just kind of want to understand how it works? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. So, Nick, I'll let you take it away and I can just chime in. Yeah. I mean, the way the probate works is typically there is, um, you know, you have to figure out if there's a beneficiary and you have to go through the probate process, which typically takes anywhere between 90 or six months, 90 days or six months, um, where they go and they basically look for debt. And they look for anybody that had interest in the property and they make sure all the debt's settled. Um, so that's basically the first step is you guys go through that initial probate process. Um, and of course, if there's not like an executor to the estate, then a judge basically appoints um, like a beneficiary, or I think trustee, where they would basically determine that the property has to be sold. But um, yeah, that's my understanding from at least the initial standpoint of probate. Okay. Yeah. See, it's the um, it's the mother. Her son passed away, and she she wants to sell it. Um, and like yeah, and that's I mean that's that's as far as I've gotten so far. But I got another follow up with her tomorrow, and I just was wondering what what um what questions I should be asking her. So treat it, Chad. Treat it the exact same as you would any other property. Get all the information, you know, obviously timeline is going to be to be determined because this is in the court's hands right now. Um, but I'm guessing 
She's going to be the person that's going to be on the deed. This is going to be given to her because it was her son and she's next to kin unless he had children and it was left to them. That would be my assumption. The same thing. Find out about the condition of the property. What is she looking to get for it? You should be doing homework on the property. Where are the comps in the area? Now, this may change because, like I said, probate can take up to a year. But same thing. Treat it like you would any other lead. Go through um, how you can help problem solve, what you'd like to do with the money once you know everything's settled. And you're probably going to want to just stay in contact with her. This is probably going to be about a 15-touch lead or more because it could take up to a year. Okay. She, I mean, she's highly motivated, though. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's just you can't do anything until it gets out of the court's hands. So your hands are bound until the the, process, the probate process is done. Okay, so just just treat it like a regular lead until that happens. A hundred percent, yeah. And dude, just keep coming back. Tell us about it, and let's talk about it in the daily dial sometime. All right, sounds good. Hey, man, thank you for coming up. I'm glad you figured out the YouTube. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, bye, dude. So great questions, guys. I'm going to pull a look at that. Kelly Hanno, how do I get to be a cool cat like y'all? Well, first of all, don't be late to your lives, Kelly. <laughs> Show up to your lives on time. Guys, Kelly is uh, was out here in Arizona. She's at the airport now. I was going to be late driving her to the airport. I was like, Hi. all right. So let's see here. Mark has another great question. How do you determine rental rates in specific areas? So Mark, I will tell you about myself, what I like to do. I use a few different platforms to figure this out. So um, one, I've used Batch Leads to see what the rent rates are in the area. I've also used PropStream before and I use Zillow. You can also use Rentometer. I just kind of average out from the few. Um, if you have MLS access though, that is going to be the best way to figure out what rental rates are in the area. Nick, am I missing anything there? No, no, that's exactly what we use. So um, yeah, MLS first. If you don't have access to MLS and all the other platforms like PropStream and Rentometer, stuff like that, they're all pretty accurate. Yep. Yep, Ramon. See, guys, I told you Ramon's a goat. He knows all the stuff. He said rento meter. So definitely reach out to Ramon if you haven't yet. Um, here's a great question by Toma. So Toma said, can an owner come back to take control of the house in a sub two? Nick, tell us about what a deed in lieu is. Um, yeah, so I mean, to, just to kind of answer your question, can an owner come back, take control of the house of a sub two? Um, typically no, because we take title to the property, right? But if it's something where we default, then we usually do what's called a deed in lieu of foreclosure, also known as a performance deed that gives the seller, the original owner, the rights to get the property back without having to go through the foreclosure process. Uh, but typically if we're just taking over subject to we're on time with our payments, then no, because we have title to the property. 100% great, great answer. And you know, a nice little tidbit that I've heard from role playing with people is uh, this is what we say because we've never defaulted on a payment before um, when we buy properties. And the whole point of this is, you know, you want to own, you want to own assets and get a tax depreciation. But what a, a nice line to say to some sellers is, you know, actually most of our sellers try and get us to default so they can take that property back because we've gone through and, you know, future proof the property. It's never happened before, but um uh, sellers have actually tried to get properties back because they're nicer, uh, just by joking with us, things like that. Oh, sorry guys, I just got a got a call I had to ignore. But yeah, great question, Toma. All right, so uh, we have ten minutes left on this. I want to get a few more questions answered. Um, let's see where we can go. Here's N Niall Drummond said, "I've been hustling for seven months and closed three deals so far." but now it has come to a standstill. Any suggestions? So now the first thing I would ask you, what were you doing in those seven months that's different now? How consistent are you being? That is huge. I mean, Nick, what would you recommend besides being consistent? Yeah, I mean, that was my first thought too, is like, what, what are you doing differently that you weren't doing when you got those three deals? So the way that I would look at it is whatever got your first deal is gonna get you your next deal and your next deal and your next deal. And you do that up until a point where you can add on additional uh, additional team members, like a virtual assistant, somebody to come and help you. Uh, but if you're doing something differently, maybe you just took your foot off the gas and you're not as consistent and you're not going as hard as you were. Um, so yeah, I would I would just basically reflect and do what you were doing then and just maybe double down on that. 100% great question. So uh, we are in our final 10 minutes here. I'm going to let Nick pull up batch leads on his computer. We're going to pull a list. I think what we're going to do is pull a list for 
Aberrant Art, because you've been asking the best questions. So Aberrant Art, what I'd like to do is invite you to come up on stage with us, tell us what area you would like to um, get a list pulled from. And if you can't come on live with us, can you just drop the area where you'd like us to pull a thousand records from? So Aberrant Art, we are going to ask you to come on stage. I see a few other people, just like Facebook users on here. Guys, make sure you hit that StreamYard link so you can come live with us. We would love to meet you face-to-face -face and answer some questions. Um, great. So we're going to wait for Aberrant Art to either join us live or just put down the area you would like to have us pull a list in. I think that'd be most beneficial. Um, while we're waiting for Aberrant Art to comment there, this question's already been asked. We're not going to click on that one. Let me pull up one from Zach Hamilton, Zachary Hamilton. In the past, the past few deals I've gotten have all been to rental investors. Is there a different formula buy price I would do to adjust to this demographic? Nick, what would you say? So past deals from rental investors, not really. I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do. If they're asking retail, then the only difference you would adjust is maybe doing something on creative financing like subject to or seller finance. Um, but for the most part, it's there's no special formula for rental investors. It's just a diff different demographic, right? Usually it's a bit of a higher conversation. And in my opinion, if you're working with a experienced investor, it's typically harder to get the deal uh, in a sense that like they're not going to let you take a lot of their equity. But no, it's, it's just pretty much the same formula in terms of the buy price. Great question. Thank you for answering that. So Nick, all right, Aberrant Art answered. Uh, they'd like, they're in Canada. They would like to try and do Alberta, Canada, if we can pull a list there. I don't know if Batch Leads works in Canada, but we can give it a go. And if Alberta, Canada does not work, they would prefer San Diego, California. Awesome. Yeah, let's do San Diego. And then Aberrant Art, if you can private chat us, we can email this to you afterwards so you can have this list. So, guys, if you're not familiar, we are on right now BatchLeads.io. This is um, it's kind of plugged in with the Batch Driven app. Uh, we use this to pull lists. We use this to skip trace. We actually also use this to comp properties. So this is really nice. It's an all-in-one, and this is where we pull all of our data from. So this is where we get all of our accurate phone numbers. Um, the nice part of batch leads is you can get, you know, it can go up to eight phone numbers, but the first three are the most likely to be the accurate phone number you can call. And you can just plug this in and have your VA contact uh, the sellers and your list that you've called. So Nick, I'm going to let you talk through what you're doing so everybody can understand. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Caroline, are you thinking about maybe doing the same list that we've been doing, like absentee, 30% equity? Yeah, I think that's the best way to go. We'll do that for now. Let's do that for a couple months and just see how it works out, and then we can change it up. Love it. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do is in the occupancy status, I'm going to do absentee owner, uh, vacant status. So, we can pretty much just have any status. doesn't matter if it's vacant. So, what we're going to be targeting is people that maybe have this property as a rental, or whatever have you, they don't actually live in the property. We found that the absentee uh, list is a really, really good list to hit. Classifications, residential, property type, let's do single family, townhomes, condominium, and mobile home. Ownership info, let's do a minimum of 10 years. Okay, valuation and equity. So I like to do 30% equity. And let's see what we get. Perfect. I am also pulling this up. Aberrant Art, actually, it's, since you're not able to figure out how to private chat us, if you look in, guys, if you look in the comments below in the description, you can see our Instagram handles. And actually, underneath my name, it has, uh, underneath my face right here on my thumbnail, it has Carol the Ginger. That's my Instagram handle. And then Nick's is Nick R. Newling. So you can message either one of us on Instagram. I'd recommend ne messaging Nick. Just give him your uh, email so we can send you that list. And uh, we can get that over to you when we're done. But, um, Five minutes left. Nick is pulling this list right now. While he's pulling this list, we'll do one more question. Um, so if you guys can hit us with one more question, we'll pull it up here and answer it before we wrap up our live. 
what I'd like to know, guys, we have, oh, wow, we have quite a few people in here. I appreciate you guys all tuning in. Not only will I take one more question, I would really just like to hear, like, if you can give some sort of feedback in the comments below, like, if, is this helpful? Are we covering the topics you want to talk about? Is there something specific you guys would like to talk about next week that we can get that covered? Um, so just let me know in the chat if uh, this is helpful and we should continue doing it. Perfect. So pulling that up. I'm not seeing any questions. I guess they're ready for us to wrap it up here, Nick. I have a question for you, Nick. Yeah. What, you know, what is the best way that, what's the formula that you use when to find, uh, you know, your buy price on the property? To find my buy price? Yes, sir. Um, so typically what I do is, again, you have to determine the ARD. The way we do that is we compare apples to apples and the most similar property, the same subdivision, not crossing any major boundaries like a main road or a lake or anything like that. We want to be as close to the subject pro property as possible um, within 200 square feet, plus or minus, and then within 2,500 square feet of the lot size typically. And then from there, I typically imagine it and I always price it out as a wholesale deal first. So I take off the commission and closing costs off of the top of the ARV. So when it sells in the retail market, you have to factor in what that investor is going to pay for closing costs and commissions. That's typically about seven to eight percent. You factor in a little bit more wiggle room, and then from there, I always deduct my rehab costs. Uh, a little bit conservative on the rehab costs as well, and then from there, I subtract what the flipper wants to make, and then our wholesale fee, and that typically gives me my buy price. Awesome, wonderful. And then you're just going to pull these records here. We're aberrant art. We're going to be looking for your uh, direct message to us on Instagram. Guys, if you're not following us on Instagram, you definitely should. Uh, March 10th, we're going to be doing a meetup in Glendale, Arizona. We'll have Pace and Cody there. We're going to have tacos. And we're actually going to give away some more data. We're going to have a bunch of giveaways there. So if you guys can jump on or come meet us, we post all of our stuff on our Instagram channels. Um, you guys can keep up with us there, see kind of what we're doing in the day to day. Um, and what I'd actually like to see if you guys are a member of the creative financing page with Pace Morby, you know, use the hashtag live uh, Friday live with Carolyn and Nick and uh, let us know how beneficial this was. And maybe I can document an entire day with Nick and show you guys how we comp properties, how we talk to buyers, how we talk to JV partners. Um, if that's something that you think would be beneficial, I would love to do that live. I'll show you guys, I got I to gotta see more than this on this YouTube channel. I need uh, your feedback on Facebook. So make sure you, first of all, like and subscribe here so you can know when we're going live. But get in on that Facebook channel or page and uh, let me know if you want to see us document our entire day because I'd be more than happy to show you what my day-to-day -day looks like. So, all right, guys. I think this is the end of our uh, live here. I appreciate you all coming on. If this is beneficial to you, if this is, you think can be beneficial to any of your friends or family that are looking to invest in real estate, you can share it with everybody. Nick, do you have anything to add before we wrap up here? No, that's just about it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, if you guys didn't get my phone number, I know I dropped it a couple of times. I will drop it one more time to just add value. If you guys need a closing seller, happy to do that. If you guys need uh, a buy price or if you guys just need help selling a deal, that's what we're here for. Uh, and we'll also look at potentially buying the deal as well. So any way that I can add value, if you guys need help, if you're stuck, feel free to call or text me anytime and uh, let's do it. Let's work together. A hundred percent. Yeah. And actually I, I missed something that Nick just mentioned there. We are buying properties in Phoenix. If you guys have a property uh, and the numbers make sense, or if you need help with anything, we are buying and doing fix and flips. And we'd love to show you guys the rope. So if you have any opportunities for us in the Phoenix area, we will buy that property. So if you start driving virtually for dollars, choose the Phoenix area, text those sellers, call those sellers, be a problem solver, and we will help you and show you how to get the deals done. So thank you guys for tuning in to our Friday Live. We really appreciate you. I'm going to check on my Instagram. I'll see if you guys have messaged me. If you guys need help with anything, we'd love to help you. And thanks. Bye, guys. See you guys.